another video. I've already been diagnosed with POTS but when I last went to my cardiologist he was shocked about the fact that I faint like daily and for like half an hour even when I'm lying down or sat down or whatever. So <laughs> he has basically sent me to get every single test under the sun including a tilt table test which I've never had before. I didn't really explain it in the video but POTS is a condition I have. It's a form of dysautonomia um, it's short for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Um, it basically means that everything my body's meant to do automatically, it doesn't do. It means I can't regulate my heart rate or my blood pressure or anything like that. Um, if you want a bit more information, or I have like a pop-in thing, I think over this side, pop-in thing. Um, I have made another video on it, so if you want more like info on it, then just click, on, click over there. Yeah, I'm mildly terrified, so I'm taking you with me for some more support and it might help people who are gonna have a tilt table test. So, we'll see. Oh, look how pretty he is. Look, how, look, look, at, the, look at the boy. In case you don't know what a tilt table test is, it's basically like you get strapped to like this bed, which can like twisty twist. Um, I believe they monitor your heart rate and your blood pressure like continuously. They like strap you in. I believe they make you go upright, lie down and then like back a little bit. But I don't think they tip you fully upside down. Like this test is really, really gonna aggravate all my symptoms. So I'm gonna ask my mom to record me while I'm having the test done. Um, Cause I believe my arms are gonna be strapped to my side, which I'm not gonna like, but you know. So I won't be able to record myself if my arms are strapped to my side. So I'll ask my mom to like record a little bit if she can. So I've just had my breakfast and everything and I'm about to edit my witch's casket video. I've done nothing but import it in so far. Um, but I need to get this done by... I do need tomorrow! So it's now 10.30, I think I saw somewhere. Yeah, 10.34. And I am exhausted. Like, I need a nap. But oi, fudgy! That's you don't want to eat that. That's my pain cream. You know that tastes bad. I've been editing. I haven't even edited that long. I've only edited the first like six minutes of the video. <laughs> no, no. But like, I'm not in the zone at all. He's wide awake and needing some energy release, and I'm needing a nap. I'm absolutely exhausted. He's laid down. Get that sleepy boy. He's not actually sleepy, he's just bored. So it is now 11.20. I have edited the majority of the video now. I'm just, just saving it. Um, but that's as much editing as I have time for. Um, I'm going to take him down, have some lunch, and then I'm going to take him up to the field. So we're on our walk at the moment. We're just collecting... Um, another doggy, because we've got three of us going on a walk today. Good boy. We made it to the field. I've gone ahead first, because Podge always runs into the field. I'm walking Podge back home now. Um, I got too tired, so I had to leave early. Um, I'm going to go back home, pack my bag and leave and head to hospital. Also, I have like an apple sweet. It's very tasty. So we're leaving in about 15 minutes. He still wants to play with his ball. Of course he does. He's half collie. Um, but I'm quite nervous because I don't know what to expect and I really don't like that. I am an absolute dummy. I was just reading my letter and it says please do not eat or drink three hours before the test. My test is in two hours, less than, and I just drank two cups of water and a bunch of sweets. Like they're only small cups of water. Okay. 
Okay, that's fun. I feel sick. Oh dear. Mm. I feel very, very sick. And I just dropped my phone as I got out of the car and now it's all smashed. <laughs> nearly passed out so I had to like run <laughs> to the seats and I left my lanyard in the car also half an hour early to the appointment because we gave ourselves too much time hello <laughs> Hopefully, I added in a little clip of me explaining the tilt table test. If not, I'll add it in now. Yeah. So I had three ECG cords, like one there, one there, and one there. And I also had a really interesting blood pressure machine. So there's one on your arm, one on your wrist, and one that goes like on your middle finger. When he first put it on, my hand was ice cold. So he basically got one of like the rubber gloves, filled it with hot water. And I was just lying there in the bed, holding the hand of this like, hot glove. While I was waiting for my hand to warm up, he explained that the test would probably take about an hour and I also made sure that they knew that I had a fainting disorder so there was a quite a high chance that I would faint. They basically said that if I do start to feel faint that I should let them know. Just make sure I'm safe and keep an eye on me. Yeah so once I was warm enough to get a reliable reading, they got the velcro and they like strapped it, did it over my knees and then did it over my waist. Because my arms were free I felt fine. They then slowly turned off the lights, and then once it was completely dark, the test started. I was just lying flat for a while. I'm not sure exactly how long I was lying flat for, but I'd say it was probably between like 15 and 20 minutes. He asked me if I was ready to be moved upright, and I was. It was the weirdest sensation because the bed, because rather than like you like standing up, it was like, <laughs> It was really weird. Like it rotated pretty much around your hips. As the bed rotated and as I rotated, I could physically feel all the blood draining because my vitals obviously were going slightly berserk. The two technicians that were sat at the monitor, it really startled them and I could hear them muttering amongst themselves and they kept pointing at the monitor like, ooh. <laughs> um, I did also very nearly pass out as I was being brought upright, but like I wasn't, I didn't want to stop yet. I wanted to, I wanted to try to get some more data. So I continued standing upright for quite a while, but I felt pretty much okay for the majority of it, but I would get um, the occasional wave of dizziness and the technicians would quite often check on me. And so every now and then if my stats would go slightly funny, he'd be like, are you okay? Are you all right to carry on? Yeah, it was a very weird feeling being completely vertical, like completely vertical, but also almost leaning against a bed because you were strapped to it. So all of like your back and your body was in contact with this wall or this bed but you were completely vertical. So it almost felt like I was falling forwards. So I think I was probably upright for about 10 minutes until I felt the, like, until I got to the point where I was like, okay, I need to sit down. So I told the technician and he said that my stats were impressive and I wanted to, you know, and asked if I wanted to carry on. I waited about five seconds and I really needed to lie down. Like I was, I was so, so close to passing out. Um, so they laid me down and I was like if they were any later I would have just gone um, and they laid me down nice and slowly they kept the lights off so it didn't startle me at this point I was right on the verge of unconsciousness like I couldn't really see anything my ears you know I was barely conscious and the technicians were really 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 good so one of them was staying at the at the monitor to you know keep blocking everything and the other one was with me and helping me do deep breaths but because it was really dark they couldn't tell if I was conscious or not, or like at what point, where I was basically. So I was having to constantly talk to them, but it's really, really difficult when you're on like borderline unconscious to continuously talk to people. Um, I did eventually come back around, but it took quite a while. They slowly turned on the lights when I was ready. I was allowed to sit up when I was ready. They got me some water. And yeah, so they were really, really good at making sure I felt safe and comfortable. They did everything at my own pace. When I did pass out, they made sure I was safe. But yeah, so I thought I was going to be continuing the test once I had come back around because I'd only been up there for like half an hour-ish. Um, but they said because my stats were quite intense and because of how I reacted to it that they weren't going to push me through anymore. It was very intense. 
but it was really good that I reacted to it because it means I got good good results and it means that they know hopefully they have a better clue to what's wrong with me so yeah yes I've had some supper I've not eaten much at all I've had some mashed potato mashed potato <laughs> It's so good, you know, just a little loose. Kind of it's now a time. It's now 9.43, so I survived. Um, we've come down to let out the boy and to make myself some grapes. Uh, I'll probably eat my grapes and then go to sleep because I am so sleepy. So very, very sleepy. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, sorry I wasn't able to record actually in the thing. I think I explained earlier it was like dark and I wasn't even allowed in there. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Bye! Oh, give! Oh, give! Thank you! I have 20 pieces of grapes. Mm -hmm. Grapes. Patchy, patchy. Patchy, patchy. Grapes. I'm sad. I've eaten all my grapes. Good night.